At Richardson's Farm in Middleton, new updates, a state-of-the-art barn, a cow fitness tracker, robotic milkers, are making for some, well, blissful bovines. The cows are a lot happier in this facility, so they're, they're making more milk. Yes, the cows milk themselves with robotic milkers. Though the technology isn't new, the first milking robot was installed in 1992 in the Netherlands. The milking robots are new to Richardson's, says Adam Goodwin, the farm's herdsman, better known here as the cow guy. Two years ago, my alarm was constantly set for 2.30 a.m. I was in the barn at 3.30, milking by 4. Now, I'm always on call. All the robots are hooked up to my smartphone, but I have a schedule that, you know, I can eat breakfast and come in at seven o'clock and it's okay because the cows are milking themselves. A hundred miles to the west in Hadley, Mass, the ladies are lining up by the robotic milkers at Barstow's Longview Farm. We haven't milked our cows by hand since the 1930s, thank goodness. We have five robotic milkers, so they're on their own schedule and they're milking usually two, three, sometimes four or five times per day whenever they want. Babette here will milk for a little more than 11 minutes at the robotic milkers. It does not hurt the cow at all. Denise Barstow Mans tells us the robots know the name of each cow, when they were last milked, and how long they need to milk for. It's actually a lot more comfortable for the animal, especially compared to, to hand milking, like yanking on. It's not, not great. Um, but this is as much an efficiency tool for us, these robots, as it is an animal care tool. It's a real testament to how much more comfortable the animals are with the robots. Barstow Mans understands and appreciates life on the farm. After all, she grew up here. I'm not a farmer though, so if my family saw that, they'd be like, you're not a farmer girl. Barstow Mans and her family run the farm store and manage their herd of 600 cows, 300 of which are milking cows. For the family, sustainability is a priority. They now have an anaerobic digester on the farm that turns waste into electricity and helps resolve some of the concerns about methane emissions. It's a system that takes the energy potential, which is methane, out of cow manure and food waste and turns it into enough electricity to power 1,600 homes. So we're getting that food waste from local food producers like Cabot, where we're sending our milk. So we have this closed loop and we have plenty of manure from our herd and that's commingling in the digester and all that gas comes to the top like a big methane fart. Uh, and we run that through our engines, turn a generator, and that makes the electricity that goes out to the grid. It may not sound appealing and be thankful you can't smell through the screen, but this digester is just one small step towards making dairy farming a more sustainable industry. Back in 2008, we did the first life cycle assessment of an agricultural food and found out that dairy is only like 2% of greenhouse gases in the United States. It's an industry by 2050 to be greenhouse gas neutral. Joining cooperatives like Cabot are one way dairy farmers can remain sustainable and profitable. Cabot has 600 farm families in New England, New York, and we're very lucky to be one of them. And all of our milk goes to be processed in West Springfield at one of their uh, Cabot's facilities. Barstow Man says that dairy often gets left out of the local food conversation, but dairy, even the stuff at the big brand supermarkets, is coming from local farms. It's pretty perishable. It's going to these processing plants and then it's on a grocery store shelf within 48 hours. Our milk is mostly ending up in Cabot butter in, in the region. That's my brother-in-law, Brett, my husband, Hale. 60 miles east of Hadley, Whittier Farms is located in the heart of central Massachusetts. It's homes where our community comes to be connected to the food that we're growing and we work with other local farms. Sam Stavner is a fifth generation dairy farmer at this Sutton farm. Her job is connecting with the community and educating people about Whittier Farms. People saw our fields as open space and they didn't understand why dairy farms needed that open space. We need those fields to produce food for our animals so that our animals can in turn produce food for your table. And it just kind of got lost in the conversation as local farming became this beautiful, story to tell. 
And back to Barstow's anaerobic digester. They say it's one step, one small mm -hmm. step, but an important step in helping to make dairy farming more sustainable. And these innovations are really important because of concern about the environmental impact of dairy farming. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations says dairy is responsible for nearly 3% of total human-induced greenhouse gas emissions. Not a huge amount, but if you can yeah. make that better, that's better. Coming up, the highs and lows of farm life.